Hi everyone, my name is Dana Jelkinen and I'm the Deputy Director of Museum and Education here at the Ohio State House. And we're back today for another Stories in the State Room. So once again, we're here in the State Room of the State House. Um, and today we are going to be reading a, a lovely book called Packard Takes Flight by Susan Sachs Levine. Um, and this book will kind of give us the opportunity to go visit some of our favorite places in Columbus um, that we can't necessarily go to in person right now because they're closed um, due to the COVID-19 crisis. So it's kind of a nice way to remind ourselves of some of the really great places that we have that we can see here in Columbus. This version of the book was printed in 2017. Um, so there are some things in here that aren't quite true to Columbus right now. So for example, um, the Santa Maria replica is mentioned and that's not currently on display. But it's also kind of a, a fun little reminder of some of the things that have been in Columbus in the past and might come back again someday as well. Um, so one of the really great things about this book too is that in the margins it includes a lot of information about the sites that I won't read, I'll just stick to the main part of the story, but I definitely encourage you um, to go to your local library and check this book out, or also we have it here in the Ohio State House um, gift shop, uh, which is open to the public once again, um, and also you can go to the State House uh, gift shop's website and you can also purchase it online. So if you decide you really love this book and want to have it all the time, I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and read Packard Takes Flight. High up on the 41st floor of the Rhodes Tower in downtown Columbus, a peregrine falcon family nests in the gravel of a window ledge. The city spreads out below like a patchwork quilt. I'm telling Penny Peregrine, shouted at her brother Packard. Mom and Dad said not to go so close to the edge. I don't care. I need to exercise my wings. Mom said I'll be flying soon, explained Packard. Packard was the oldest of the three falcon chicks and was always trying to prove that he was the bravest of his siblings, Penny and Pete. You brag too much, Packard, said Pete. Inside, Pete couldn't wait until he could fly and explore their hometown of Columbus, the capital of Ohio. The sun was just peeking above the Columbus Dispatch newspaper building when Packard strutted all the way to the edge stretched his right wing and then his left. He turned to see if his brother and sister were impressed. Suddenly, a gust of wind whipped by and threw Packard off balance. He felt himself falling through the air. Packard flapped his wings as hard as he could, struggling to stay aloft. He glanced up at Penny and Pete's frightened faces and then down at the street below. A big truck stopped right under him. He lurched up and then tumbled down, landing clumsily in the truck bed, inside a large box filled with brightly colored balls. Oh my gosh, gasped Packard. The truck began to move forward with a loud roar. Packard wasn't sure what was happening, but he looked up at his siblings and gave them an okay sign, pretending to look confident. If only he felt that way. As the truck rattled along, Packard's heart was thumping, but he tried to remain calm. Before he could think of a plan to get back to his nest, the truck stopped. Men started carrying off the boxes of balls into a huge gray building. Once inside, a worker dumped the balls into a large bin. Packard jumped out just in time and watched in amazement as children began scrambling for the balls and tossing them high into funnels and tubes. As he surveyed the room, he spied a mouse. Hi there, is this the Rhodes Tower? asked Packard politely, trying to remember the manners his mother had taught him. No way, don't you know? This is COSI, the biggest, most awesome science center around, replied the mouse. Wow, said Packard. He looked around and saw kids playing with laser beams, magnets, and pulleys. Close by, he watched boys and girls busily taking apart old radios and computer keyboards to see how they worked. A loud kaboom from a nearby science show made Packard jump and head for the exit. When he got outside, he saw a group of children climbing aboard a big yellow bus. Packard scurried on and hid under a seat just as the bus started driving away. When the bus stopped, Packard found himself gazing up at a huge sailing ship. A colony of ants was marching single file across a railing. Packard inquired, can you tell me the way to the Rhodes Tower? I have no knowledge of that place, sir. This is the Santa Maria, sir. It is an exact replica of the Spanish ship that Christopher Columbus commanded in 1492 when he discovered America, barked the ant with military precision. With a final salute, he added, the city of Columbus was named in his honor, sir. 
At ease, soldier, responded Packard as he climbed on board. After pecking around in the galley area and sleeping quarters on deck, he looked up at the huge mast, sail, and crow's nest. Packard could not resist climbing up the rope ladder. At the top, he looked down over a glassy blue-gray river. To the north, Packard could see a diamond-shaped field, and farther on, a horseshoe-shaped stadium. To the south was a beautiful park with a giant fountain. Oh, how his heart ached suddenly. The river reminded him of his mother. She would leave the nest every day to clean her feathers in the Scioto River. This must be the place, but to Packard's disappointment, she was nowhere to be seen. Trying to muster his courage, he got off the ship and jumped into a police car while the officer was not looking. Perhaps he's going to the Rhodes Tower, thought Packard. When the car stopped, he found himself at the entrance to a tree-filled courtyard. A squirrel sat in the middle of a curious-looking tea party, nibbling a nut. Can you tell me if this is the Rhodes Tower? asked Packard. No, monsieur, you are mistaken. This is the Columbus Museum of Art, home to the masterpieces from around the world. Entrez, s'il vous plaît, and your senses will be awakened, beckoned the squirrel in perfect French. Well, that might cheer me up, thought Packard. Inside, Packard entered a big room with magnificent paintings. His favorite was a woman with a big red hat and a face as emerald green as leaves on the trees below his nest. Oh, my nest, thought Packard sadly. In front of the museum, a family was climbing into a taxi cab. Packard sneaked inside, sure they would be going to the Rhodes Tower. Instead, they arrived at a big building with a glass roof. Inside was a beautiful jungle of plants, trees, and flowers. He saw a sign that read Franklin Park Conservatory. A conservatory, awesome, thought Packard. Moments later, Packard entered a magical room with butterflies, a waterfall, and giant goldfish swimming in a pond. In the middle of the room was the most magnificent tower of orange glass Packard had ever seen. A plate of fruit where several butterflies were eating caught his eye and made him realize that he was getting very hungry. He must find his way home. Outside, a city bus pulled up and Packard flapped his way on, hiding under the big skirt of a woman next to him. Hoping the bus was going to the Rhodes Tower, he crossed his wingtips for good luck. They were heading toward the tall buildings of downtown. Packard was hopeful. They passed a beautiful park that had figures of people made out of velvet green bushes. That looks like a fun place to play if I ever get out of this mess, Packard thought to himself. The bus stopped in front of a building that had a big rooster on the outside. A black and tan beagle was tied to a post. Excuse me, but do you know the way to the Rhodes Tower? Asked Packard for what seemed like the hundredth time. What's it smell like? asked the beagle. I can sniff out a rabbit a mile away. Seeing Packard's disappointed face, he added, this is the North Market. Go on in, there's food galore. I'm starving, thought Packard as he dashed inside. There were dozens of shopkeepers selling meat, fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Then he saw something that truly amazed him. At the poultry stand, all the birds were just lying there and they had already had their feathers plucked. Packard was sure he could catch one. Mom will be so proud of me when I bring home one of these big birds, thought Packard. However, when Packard lunged to grab one, his head banged into an invisible wall. Ouch, he yelled. A little dizzy, Packard staggered toward the door. A snack would have to wait. Out on the sidewalk, there was a sea of people. They were racing toward a big building, talking excitedly about shots and goals and hat tricks. Packard was about to follow when he spied a long black car. The license plate read, Governor. Packard knew that the Rhodes Tower was named after James Rhodes, a former governor of Ohio. Sure that this car would take him home, Packard quickly ducked inside. When the car came to a stop, Packard recognized the huge white building with the cupola on top. This was the State House, the center of government for Ohio. He was close. Mom, I'm here, he called out as he scrambled up the steps. If I can just get to the top, Packard thought, I'll be able to see my nest. Up one flight of steps, Packard found the House of Representatives chamber. Lots of men and women dressed in suits were sitting behind wooden desks and pushing a button to vote. Nearby was the Senate chamber. There were not as many people in this room. They were listening to a person talk about a new law to protect endangered birds. Finally, Packard made it to the top of the building. 
He squeezed out a partially open window into the fresh air. Looking one way, he saw the Ohio Theater. Another way, he saw the Trinity Church. He remembered hearing the bells in the tower ring every hour from his nest. Then finally, there it was, the Rhodes Tower. And perched on the window ledge of the 41st floor was his nest. Yahoo, he cried. Packard started flapping his wings, calling, Mom, it's me, over here, Packard. All of a sudden, he looked down and realized he was no longer standing on the windowsill. But he wasn't falling either. He was flying. With all his energy, Packard flapped his wings wildly and started to make his way toward the Rhodes Tower and his family. Just a little farther. His mother and father could not believe their eyes. They jumped and whistled in circles around him, so elated that he was home. You've taught yourself to fly, you clever boy, exclaimed his mother. What a wonderful surprise, said his father. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to take you out and show you all the sights of Columbus. Kosai, the art museum, the North Market. But Packard wasn't listening. He was so tired from his journey that he had fallen asleep and was already dreaming about his next big adventure. The end. So I hope you enjoyed Packard Takes Flight. Um, obviously it features the Ohio State House, so that's very exciting for us here in this building. Um, and lots of really cool, fun uh, spots in downtown Columbus. So I definitely encourage you to check this book out. As I mentioned earlier, you can either find it at your local library or also we have it here at the Ohio State House in our museum shop. So thank you all so much for joining us today for our stories in the stateroom and we'll see you next time.